All right, check it out. This is what we got. We got this track I did a while back. It's called Get With This. I'm going to go over a couple things. You can check out how I mixed it. I'm going to show you how I put it together. And for some of you out there just getting into the game or whatever, you know, it's a little format maybe you could uh, put together. It's real simple layout, nothing extravagant or spectacular, yet it, it comes together nicely. I'm going to play the hook first right here. All my vocals, by the way, it's all me. Um, hey, lady, what's the biz? Do you want to get with this? I've been watching you, watching me while I'm doing my thing. Now that's my type of lady, the kind that drive me crazy. The kind of girl you want to take home. Get her all alone and get your freak on. All right, so we got that. That's the hook. Let's go where I'll just go a little part of the lead, of the lead vocal here. It's a verse. Girl, you're looking so damn fine right now. Wanna take it to my place, lay it down. All the brothers wanna lie, only thing on my mind is me and you playing around. Girl, I'm all too grown for games, too thrown for most these dames. And I know you can show me a lot of things in them lips that you got to show blow my brains. All right, pretty dope. I like it. People like it. If you don't, I don't give a damn. Check it. All right. Now, I actually tracked this in another session, and I exported all my vocals to make it more neat. And you're not going to see any uh, beginning or end fades or any edits like that because that was all done in another session. And like I said, I mixed it down and brought it in here. So I just sold the lead vocal. Let's just hear that. Girl, you're looking so damn fine right now. You remember that? And then I got some intro going on here. Boy, Dominic, I got a new style, new flavor for you. Whatever. And so that's lead vocal. Right here I got the stress overdubs, which is basically me coming in on certain parts to add emphasis on different parts of the verse. Right now, lay it down. Now, there's actually some headphone bleed going in there. You can hear the sound from my headphones. I'm not really worried about it because those are actually pushed back and they're not very, they're not the same level as my lead vocals. So it's not really going to be evident. You're not going to be able to hear that. And it's going along with the instrumental anyway. So I'm not really worried about it. Now, I might have to go back in here later on whenever I get time and do some ad libs. And basically, that's your yeah, what, you know, stuff like that because it's kind of plain, it's kind of dry. It doesn't really have that professional feel to it to my taste so i'm going to go back in there and add that kind of stuff so you're not going to see no ad libs in here because i haven't done any yet all right so this is what they sound like together oh damn fine right now want to take it to my actually you're going to hear this my... now you're hearing an echo and that's because i do have some automation going on as you can see right here i got some automation going on the automation is actually way down here on this super tap wave super tap you'll see what that is in a second So there we go. So you got my lead verse, my other lead verse right there, goes over for the second verse, and then basically three verses, and then you got all my stress overdubs. Now, my lead vocals are going out. This is my input. As you can see, my output's going out to the lead bus. In, in Cubase, it's called a group. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide down, and let's see, my stress tracks are going to a stress bus. So let's go check those out. So if you don't know what that is, basically my vocals inside the program are going out, Picture a line going down right here, and they're going down. They're coming into this little channel strip here. I can go ahead and show you what I got on there. So if I solo that, take that off. Oh, damn fine right now. All I got going on is a compressor, an EQ, and a de-esser. I got three sends. If you don't know what a send is, that's basically, I'm going to kind of simplify it for you, um, for those who don't know. If you want some reverb on your vocals, you want uh, a little bit of effects on your vocals, stuff like that, it's better to use it as a send effect, depending on the type of reverb and how you're going to use it, because some reverbs are, you need to go into through mode, and basically, I'm not going to get into that, but sends, that's what they are. You want to add some reverb, set it up as a send, and Cubase it is an FX channel. And some of them you just set up an aux channel and you put your reverb on the aux and then you come into your bus or whatever, your track, and you dial in some send. Basically, it's going to send and return the lead vocal out to that reverb and it's going to add the reverb sound to your vocals. That's a real simplified way of putting it. All right, anyway. So let's go with the, for the lead vocals. 
basically that's all you see here this is what I got going on now there's some things we all got a little trade secrets I got a special plug-in combination going on on the actual lead vocal track here not gonna go into that also if you look down here on my send I got a thing called thickness I'm not gonna go into that but I will show you this so compression equalization DSing all right you can do any order you want the order is going to depend on how you want to do it so let's go check out the compressor shall we the wave c1 compressor love it all right so i'm using a fast attack time pretty fast um 100 millisecond release and a ratio of about four to one these aren't typical settings it's going to depend on a lot of things so i'll go ahead and play it we'll see how much gain reduction i'm getting right here so damn fine right now wanna take it to my place lay down other brothers all right let's check out the equalization so you see i'm getting about six decibels reduction there now when i actually track this inside of my patch mix right here inside my mu sound card you're not going to see it here but i have actually an fx area here and i can bring up my core effects and i can throw a compressor let's say this one here i can take this drop it in right there and right now I can compress my vocals I bring down the threshold and right now I'm compressing my vocals I recorded through that so basically it went through my MU sound cards DSP mixer and added some of its own compression all right so it's like I got a little hardware slash software compressor compression going on all right right now what you're hearing is uh, some reverb on my vocal I could turn that up anyway all right so enough about that let's look at the stress overdubs here basically like I've said before me coming in during certain uh, portions of the, the verse to add emphasis so if I just uh, play that there a lot of things blow my brains what's the deal and as you can see I did all the panning on these tracks because I got one for the left and one for the right so I got 75% to the left and 75% to the right. And they're outgoing to my stress bus, which is down here. And you can see the plugins I got going on there. Um, it's lowered down a little bit. I usually control my volume through my compressor, though. That's where I do most of my gain for the bus. And I'll do all my fine adjustments with the actual fader in the mixer. But I got a, again, the Wave C1 using a faster attack. Things that you want to put to the back of the mix or things you want to see more further away, you can use a faster attack. Uh, things you want to bring more forward, you might use a slower attack. The reason why is it smooths a faster attack will smooth over the transients, so a lot of the transient material won't come through. And the stuff that you want to pull to the front, you allow more of that transient to come through. Um, also, the release, you can use a longer release time on this to, like, smooth it out and push a little bit to the further further to the back it's all it's all going to be dependent upon other things in the mix i usually use an eight to one ratio somewhere around that area for uh stress overdubs and ad libs and stuff like that but in this instance i chose this ratio here this is the eq i'm using i'm doing a little bit of drastic eqing right here and the reason why is because when i recorded this song I had a different setup here than than what you see here for recording, but I must have went and did a tutorial and came back and did some more recording because, as you can see, my three-band EQ here, anything after this send that you see here that's going to my ASIO, basically sending this channel strip right here, my, my mic line, to the recording program, anything after that will get recorded, so I can record myself with some reverb, which I would not. But I must have had my three-band EQ on there. And as you can see in the low end, this is usually bumped up right here when I'm doing these tutorials. But I'm not gonna, it doesn't matter right now, whatever it's on. So that's what happened. That's why I got like a lot of drastic EQ right here going on. And I have the Waves de-esser here. And we can see how much attenuation I'm getting on my sibilance. A lot of things blow my brains. What's the deal? So every time I had any kind of... Or any kind of sound like that, you're getting um, some gain reduction according to your uh, side chain here and your frequency you choose.
As far as sends, I'm adding some reverb. I believe it's the same reverb setting I'm using for... Yeah, I usually have a forward reverb, a reverb for stuff that I put on the in the front of the mix, like my lead vocals. And I'll have a reverb that I use for stuff I want to push back. But the stress overdubs are part of the lead vocals, so I just use the same reverb on those. But my ad-libs right here that I'm going to end up putting down on the track, and maybe some repeats, which is basically where I'm manually repeating something, I will usually use a uh, different reverb setting. Maybe push it to the rear a little bit. Let's see how much gain reduction I'm getting on the stress. A lot of things blow my brains. What's the deal? All right, so about eight decibels, somewhere around there. All right, now let's take a look at the hook and what's going on with that. Don't get caught up on the fact that this is a stereo track and this is a mono and this is a mono. Um, I, I know that these are mixed down in stereo. However, they're really mono. When I exported them, because I like I said, I did those in another session also. I did not check a mono export, so it exported it in stereo. It doesn't really matter because the information's the same on the left and the right, and it's right down the center, mono, so it doesn't matter. The fact that it's on a stereo track doesn't change anything, or the fact that it's on a mono track. I just happen to have a stereo track here, and I uh, threw it on there. All right, If you want to be more organized, I'd say just make it a mono track. Anyway, so don't get hung up on the fact that it's a stereo track for any newbies out there watching this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and solo the hook. The hook has automation for the harmonies that I got going on here. And sometimes I do real harmonies and sometimes I don't. Uh, I created fake harmonies for this and you're going to hear those here shortly. Hey lady, what's the biz? Hey lady, what's the biz? Do you wanna get with this? I've been watching you, watching me while I'm doing my thing. Now that's my type of lady, the kind that drive me crazy. The kind of girl you wanna take home. Get her all alone and get your freak on. Alright, so what we have here is, as you can see, I got some automation going on. I'll kind of zoom in a little bit right there. And I'll get rid of this uh, transport. Basically, this is going to my, uh, the automation is for the waves, for the mute, I'm sorry, it's for the mute, for actually muting my harmony so that it only comes in on certain parts that I want harmonized. And I will play the uh, harmony by itself so you can hear it come in. It's going to sound weird because it's a harmony that was created by faking it. Basically, I'll give you a little tip on creating fake harmonies. I took my left take, took it into Melodyne, and increased it, I believe it was a perfect fifth. I'm not. I can't remember, and I did. I, and then I put that one for the right. So I took the left, and since I'm gonna, and then I used it for the right harmony, and I took the right and I used it for the left harmony, so that I wouldn't have the same vocal on the same side, and it would just sound a little better. And it prevents a lot of the phasing issues you might get. Um, so I'll go ahead and just play those uh, harmonies right there, and it's gonna come in. When it's up here, it's muted. When it's down here, it's not. Hey, lady, what's the bit? Well, I'm doing my thing. A type of lady. It drives me crazy. The kind of girl you want to take home. Get her all alone and get your freak on. So as you can see, um, that's what I did there. Also, if you're using Melodyne to create fake harmonies, Use the add random offset to pitch center. Uh, you'll only know what I'm talking about if you ever use Melodyne. And even if you use Melodyne, you probably don't know about it. But whenever you're going to create a harmony in Melodyne, the harmony, there's an option called add random offset to pitch center. And what that does is it adds small pitching and time differences to every single note blob so that you can take an actual verse, bring it in there, and do the add random offset to pitch center, which is different now in the new or updated Melodyne. I believe it's called something else. And uh, it can actually create a doubling type effect if you want to do that. Anyway, so for the slow people, basically what's happening here is 
I have an automation set for on and off, and it's set to read. And I basically edited this by hand, all right, by moving stuff around, by moving points and selecting them. You can also do it in real time, which I believe is what I did initially. I uh, set it to write mode. And as it was going, I would uh, mute this track here. So as it goes, I mute the track where I want it and where I don't want vocals. It records that, and then I fine-tune it by hand by using the little drag points here. I can drag them. Actually, I would select both of these points here, and I can drag them around. Well, actually, just that one. And I can bring this this way if I want to get more of this harmony onto the... But I didn't want all this part into the harmony. Is, do you wanna get with it? Because it doesn't really go well with that part there. So I dragged them just a little gap to turn it off. Is, do you wanna get with this? I've been watching you, watching me while I'm doing my thing. Right here, the harmony cuts on. As you can see, it goes back to an unmuted state. If you watch over here, my harmonies become unmuted. Watching me while I'm doing my thing. Now that's my type of lady. So on type of lady, the harmony comes in again. Now that's my type of lady. The now that's my type of and then the very end it comes in for the whole entire duration of the rest of the, the little hook I got going on. It drive me crazy. The kind of girl you want to take home. Get her all alone and get your freak on. All right, so that's the hook. Now, if you look at the hook here, all my hook tracks, I will select them. You'll notice that they're all going to my hook bus, right? They're going to my group hook, to my hook. All right, and that's down here. We're going to go check that out here, out here shortly. So all these tracks for all the newbies, I'm going to be creating a separate tutorial. Uh, I believe I already have one created, but it's in Sonar. I'll create one for this. And it talks about sends and routing and how to set up reverbs and things like that. Um, so that's another tutorial. But if you notice, this is for the center, so it's panned. This is my panning. It's panned right in the center. And then I have this 75% to the left, 75% to the right. This harmony is 50 to the left, and this harmony is 50 to the right. Panning is not typical. You're going to have to listen to your instrumentation on your instrumental and judge where other elements are, where you want to put yours. So I'm going to go ahead and play the hook, and we're going to go down to the hook group or aux or bus. And as you can see, see, I got a C1. I don't always use the same scheme for plugins. This was just a real simple setup that I threw on there. Um, it's all going to be remixed because I still got to add. As you can see, I got ad libs and repeats. Ad libs coming in saying, yeah, you know, or just doing different things. Uh, and then the repeats are me doing manual repeats of repeating things. So on the hook. Scroll down, here we are. See how much game reduction I'm getting? Hey lady, what's the biz? Do you wanna get with it? And you can hear the harmonies aren't coming in. Hey lady, what's the biz? Do you wanna get with this? I've been watching you, watching me while I'm doing my thing. So, you know, I'm not getting a lot of reduction there. Alright, so let's check out the EQ. Now the EQ I'm using is very drastic because of, like I said, I believe I record. I, I'm pretty sure I did because of the what you're seeing here. Um, I like I said before, I recorded it with this right there on accident. So you need you need to make sure you don't do shit like that. But uh, that's what I did. But I can work with it, so it doesn't matter. Um, another reason why you're seeing you'll see a lot of drastic EQ on a bus like this is because you're sending all your vocals. And there's like three tracks of vocals plus the two harmonies. And it all adds up. So if I was to put a single one of these EQs on each of those tracks, in the end it may end up not looking like this because each EQ is going to be less drastic because I'm doing less cutting. But since I'm, they're all combined, 
you'll end up doing something like this. And when you look at this, this is actually just like I got a high pass filter here, right? And then this is basically almost like a low shelf. So it's keeping a lot of the high end, and I'm getting rid of a lot of the lower area right here. And I'm, so as you can see, that's what it is. It is what it is. And, of course, a de -esser again. I don't always use a de -esser. I did here because uh, I was kind of close to the microphone on this one. Um, usually I can use less de or no de at all because I'll be further away from the microphone and I'll have my gain turned up a little louder. Hey, lady, what's the biz? Do you want to get with this? I've been watching you. So when I said get with this... Do you want to get with this? You can see it went down like six, it attenuated about six dB. Get with this. Listen to the s on this, on the end of this, it's really loud. Get with this. And then I'll come a little closer to it. Get with this. With this. And then with the, with this, I so that's bypassed. With this, I and this is enabled. With this, I watch. So it removes the eh, removes it removes the s's pretty good. Uh, again, this will create a more of a warm sound because it's actually everything above 5500 hertz is uh, getting attenuated. All right, whenever it does go above my set threshold. All right. Um, so you might want to use bandpass if you want to be less intrusive on the signal. Uh, the side chain allows you to hear what's actually being uh, attenuated and what's being uh, kind of taken away from the signal. All right, that's what's going on with that. As far as sends, I got a... a I'm using two wave super taps for uh, two different areas, so I probably should go over those. If you look at here, I got a wave super tap, and you got two of them, right? And if you look here at this super tap, uh, I believe we've looked at this one before, it's kind of panned off to the right a little bit. You'll notice that since I'm using it in a send fashion, all right, I'm not putting it directly on a track. I do not have the direct enabled. You'll use the direct if you are putting it directly on a track. Read the manual, it's in there. Uh, if you want to use it on a send, that's up to you. So, this super tap right here, I believe, is being used to do repeats on. Oh, no, that's at the bottom down here. This, uh,. Automation you see here is actually automating only a couple of delays that I use during the song. Um, instead of me actually repeating it, because you can do this manually, actually repeating something. Uh, do you wanna get with this? Tell me what's on this. your mind, and in about five minutes we can be up out of here. Out Let's of get here. a drink on. Oh. And you're actually oh. hearing that pretty dry. That was the the lead. The part of the lead verse, I don't. It's because I don't have it. Uh, there we go. Now all the elements are good to go. Do you wanna get with this? Tell me what's on your mind, and in about five minutes we can be up out of here. Let's get a drink. So basically, uh, what's happening is that you're hearing the the repeat. Sometimes I do them manually right here. All I did was I set up a wave super tap, panned it off to the right a little bit. Let's look at the the super tap, and I'm also adding extra reverb. So I actually put another reverb after the wave super tap to add some more reverb to those repeats, all right? Push them a little bit more back in the mix. That one's off to the right a little bit. Um, it's in beats BPM mode. Basically, it's going to the tempo. So it's tempo synced to the tempo right there. Um, that's pretty much it. And you can see right there what's going on. Check it out. Oh, I might want to mention that I am not using the EQ section, all right, of that plugin. You might have heard my dog is over here. He's whimpering. He wants to go out. So again, for the newbies, what's happening here is this plugin that you see here is put onto an FX channel, 
or an aux channel or basically a send type channel. And what's happening is I am activating or unmuting and muting because as you can see, this says mute right here. That's what that's the function that I am uh, automating. I am basically muting and unmuting the activity of this plugin. And when this plugin enables, it's going to take whatever I am feeding to it and it's going to basically use the settings I have here to create an echo or basically not an echo because I'm not adding any feedback which would create an echo type sound. Do you wanna get with this? Tell me what's on your mind and it's on your mind and it's on your mind and it's on your mind. It goes, it keeps going, it keeps going because I got the feedback on. I didn't want a feedback on, I just wanted a clean, simple repeat. Alright? So you can either do your repeats manually, um, or you can go in here and cheat and do this. I wouldn't call it cheating, it's just another way of doing it. Um, so again, that's what I'm doing. I am basically and when I created this, once again, when I create my automations, I actually get in here and I press the mute and I unmute on certain parts. And then I go and I fine tune it by selecting and dragging points around uh, to where I, where I want them. And also, I'm adding this reverb onto the super tap to create a little bit more reverb onto uh, the repeat that's going to happen. Do you wanna get with this? Tell me what's on your mind and in about five minutes we can be up out of here. Let's get a drink on and get our spank on. And if you're feeling me, well, this can be our theme song. Theme song. All right, so there you go. All right, so let's go up here and look at the lead real quick. You got my super tap here going on. It's pretty much full blown force going on right there. And I got my reverb right there and some reverb to it. Um, so that's the wave super tab that you're seeing that I'm automating right there once again. Now I'm going to go down, scroll down here. We're going to check out this reverb. What's going on with that? Which is right here, my reverb send. That's the setting I'm using. Uh, as you can see, I rolled off because it's got its own little EQ section. I rolled off a lot of the low end below 500 hertz. Didn't really mess with the high end. And you'll notice that afterwards I have another EQ plugin, the Waves Renaissance Equalizer 2 band. And I'm basically, the equalization in here was not enough for my taste to remove a lot of the low end mud that I was getting from the, from the reverb, uh, kind of muddying it up a little bit. So I removed a little bit more with this uh, kind of a steep decibel per octave roll off there. Not sure what the decibel per octave roll off is here. It's probably really shallow, like maybe 6 to 12 decibels, somewhere around there. I'm not sure. I could test it and find out, but I don't feel like it. Just use your ears, man. Um, so that's what's happening with the reverb. It's an actually EQ'd reverb that's going on there. Um, um's my friend, by the way. You don't know him. And, of course, a little top secret thickness thing I got going on that adds a little thickness to the... I don't know what we were just hearing, but okay. Um, oh, you're hearing the end of that. Let's see here. Oh, another thing we did not cover is the hook sends that I got going on. I'm using the same reverb that I'm using for the lead vocals. However, the super tap is a little different, and it is automated. This creates a little bit of a, a thicker... Um, uh, stereo type effect type sound and they're turned down pretty low to be vi they're vi they're like barely noticeable they're kind of like um, like subliminal so let's go ahead and scroll down and check that out which is right here uh, here's the automation on it and we'll see what's being automated here hey lady and everything is not playing once again so let me scroll up here scroll down to the, uh, oh yeah, right here. You'll see an automation here, and it's coming in, and basically it's creating a different type of fill on the hook. Hey lady, what's the biz? Do you now, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to hear this on your end, but I can definitely hear it on my end. Hey lady, what's the biz? Do you want to get with this? I've been uh, right here it's on, right here it's off, so... 
It's about to cut on right here. Yes, I've been watching you watch. Uh, correction, it's going. Yes, I've off. been. So what I just said was a lie. It's off right here. Do you wanna get? If you just watch this, you'll see it mute and unmute. If it's down here in this little area, it's turning on or unmuted. Um, oops, I can just Control Z that. Up here, it's a. Uh, Do you wanna get with this? I build muted, as you can see. Uh, you're not gonna be able to hear that. It's uh, creating just a real little subtlety that's going on, but uh, that's what's happening. Creates a little bit of a wider on certain parts that I want to add emphasis to on the hook. Creates a little wider feel for a split second, and you're probably not going to notice it. And people listening to it aren't going to notice it. It's just going to be something that's there, and it, it's doing something psychoacoustically, subconsciously. There's also little messages I have hidden in this song also to uh, make everybody send me a, a dollar bill in the mail. And I'm going to use that money to go buy myself another little rat terrier dog that I, because I already have one sitting right next to me right now. And he wants a girlfriend, so I am going to go buy him one of those. They're about 600 bucks uh, for a blue one, for a blue and white one like mine. And he's right here, beautiful dog. Just thought I'd share him with the world here. This is when he was younger. I love him. We're buds. Anyway. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, some of you um, hope you learned something just by watching this. I do have a DVD video tutorial. It's like 28 hours of video tutorials available for purchase. It's $45 right now. However, I'm going to be lowering the price and restructuring the whole tutorial. So you might see that taken down. But uh, basically, I'm going to keep putting these little free tutorials showing uh, different tracks and how they were put together. And if you want to get more in-depth on compression and equalization and all the other mixing things that are happening and why you might want to do something as well as mastering I have a mastering section of the DVD that is like nine hours of different mastering scenarios and different mastering chains that can be used uh, anyway that's all gonna be updated so if you if uh, you're struggling and you're like what the hell is going on here I will be recreating or restructuring my free tutorial I have out on sends um, and buses and routing tracks because a lot of you are putting your equalization for instance on this hook you're put you're using which isn't wrong because this one uses very less processing power very small processing power to use the EQ on the actual channel here uh, but some of you are putting your reverb because you don't know about this yet, but you're putting a reverb on every single track, a reverb plug-in, which takes a lot of processing power, and if you're using an older computer, um, it's going to limit your creativity and things you can do by doing that. Uh, you're also probably putting a compressor on every track. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying that... What is this? I didn't even mention that. We got a little bit of EQ going on, folks, with the uh, harmony there. I'm using the actual high pass filter of the actual channel or I should say track I'm using the EQ section and I'm doing a high pass filter to get rid of a lot of low end on that alright everybody so that's what's going on hope you liked it uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see I'm gonna be creating some uh, other ones here shortly as I get time uh, pretty much all my other songs that I've done and um Maybe learn you some stuff. This, by the way, is all going to be totally fully remixed and probably sent out to uh, another mastering engineer um, so he can master it because I mean, even though I can do it myself, I'd rather have a fresh set of ears, and it's always a good thing to do that. Or I could wait a little bit and master it myself. But I'll shut the hell up now and let you people go. Peace.